in this uh, short video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of uh, making a new file in InDesign and saving and exporting it. So once you've opened InDesign from the dock, the ID icon, um, you should be able to get this create new screen up. And in here we can press create new and mine's default in here to preview. So we can get a preview of what we're going to make over here. Um, and this is just going to be some kind of custom document could be an A4 or something like that. So if we look up here, we've got print pages. Let's go and choose A4 from there. And then in here, we'll see the size, the title of the uh, preset, the size of the actual document itself, which is in millimeters here. We can change that to inches or centimeters or pixels or whatever. You can see whether it's landscape or portrait uh, in its orientation. InDesign is made for making documents with multiple pages like uh, pamphlets and books and things like that. So you could set up a number of pages in here. We're just going to leave that as one for now here. Um, here we've got columns. So you can see just at the side here, this document has some columns in it by default. That's kind of useful as a layout um, thing. Oh, let's switch preview back on there. Uh, so that we can have a kind of a background grid or whatever to, to put some content into. So let's set that to four. Uh, we've got margins up here so we can have, this is the, this space between the left and right side and the top and bottom of the document. So you can change that as well if you want to. You can see here that this chain link means that all of these settings are going to be the same. So we can set all of those. You can see how this is spreading out over the page there. Um, so let's set that back to about 13. So the inside you might want to change if you're making something that's going to fold out like uh, pages in a book or a kind of pamphlet thing. You might want to make that gap bigger. So you can see here this gap is now bigger than this gap on the right hand side. This is called a fold in so that if you visualize looking in a book, you can see how the uh, middle pages, the middle of the page are, are kind of curved in. But let's just set this all to be the same at 13 mil. Bleed and slug is quite useful for us uh, if you're going to make something that you're going to get printed out. You probably want to have some kind of bleed area on it. The default in the industry, uh, printing industry, is three millimeters. So that means that if you've got color that goes to the edge of the page, then it goes up to this red area around the outside. Um, if you've got a photo, an image that, that goes around the edges of it, then they would basically what they do is they'd print your image onto your page onto a bigger page and then cut it down. And this is the sort of bleed or overprint area here. Um, there's also a slug option. So this is where you can make some space around somewhere on your document. So you could leave a message to the person that's going to print out your document or whatever for you. So once we're happy with these things, we've got columns. Oh, we didn't check, change the gutter. So the gutter here is the gap in between these um, columns that we've got here. So let's just turn that back down. Let's put that on four like that. Okay, and then press create. And so now we've got our um, document ready to do some stuff with. I've got my window here set to Essentials Classic. You can go up to Workspace up here and, and change these to different sorts of settings. And what happens is it just moves the panels around or you can reset where all the panels are um, so that you can see what's going on. Different things are brought to the fore and moved around. I like Essentials Classic. So, um, and if I'm going to be helping you, I might come over and change your uh, workspace to Essentials Classic like that. We've also got our, uh, that available up here as well. And you can reset it as well. So all of these are little panels that you can move around and you can put in places and stuff like that. Uh, and you can close them and lose them and wonder where they are and then think, oh, how do I get all of that back again? So you can just go up here and you can just go to reset whichever view it is that you're using. Same up here, workspace, reset, and then everything comes back to as it was. 
So you can see here, we've got the document in the middle. On the right hand side, you've got some palettes uh, similar to if you've used Photoshop before, there's a few things available. Up at the top here, this is the properties of the thing, whatever that is, the tool that you've selected or the object that's on the page that you're um, making stuff with. And then on the left hand side, you've got some um, tools that are going to be useful. The main ones that we're going to use, selection tool, direct selection tool, type tool, pen tool, rectangle frame tool, and if you hold the mouse down, then you can see that there's some other shapes under here. Uh, we've got gradients, and we've got the fill here, which is the one at the front, and then here is the one at the back, which we can bring to the front, which is the stroke of the outline. So if we just start by making a box, um, let's go and use this frame tool, uh, rectangle frame tool here. This one underneath it is the same, but it just is a bit more awkward to use because it's not grabbable. Look, so if we do that, we get a cross in the middle of the box. If we use this one, we don't get a cross. If we want to pick this one up, we can. If we'd want to pick that one up, I have to go to one of the lines and pick it up like that. So I'm going to press delete and get rid of that one. And I'm going to keep this one. So you can see this will snap to uh, some things that we've got set up by default in this document. So it's snapping to the guides that we've made when we added this um, these columns. Also, you can see this has handles uh, on all of the corners and all of the sides as well. So we can resize things like this. And if we hold down shift and drag in a corner, then it will retain its proportion like that. So this is similar if we wanted to make a square. OK, so if we don't hold down shift, we can make a rectangle. If we do hold down shift, we can make a square like that. And if you hold down shift and option, then you'll get a square that comes out from the center of where you clicked rather than the side top left. OK. So let's just get rid of some of those. We can go and click and delete and get rid of that. All right, so we'll go back to here. We'll make that bigger like that. Uh, if I press Command and minus, I'm going to zoom out. Command and plus, I'm going to zoom in. And Command and zero, it'll just make it as full screen as it possibly can. If I hold down the Option key, I can kind of tear off a copy of that box that I made in the first place like that. So I can have a few and you can see it's trying to help me. It's lining things up for me. It's giving me little guides and, and trying to help me put things in uh, around the page at equal distance from other objects that we've already got. So these boxes we can colour in. If we select one of them up at the top here, you can see information about that box and you can see whether it has a fill colour and a stroke color similarly so this stuff is down here um, this just has some basic color options in it if we click on there same with the stroke but if we go down here we can pick more colors because we'll get this box come up as for your color picker so you can pick a green or whatever uh, and you can see when they've got the when they're white with a red line through, that means that there's no fill or there's no stroke. There's no color associated with that particular thing. So here, well, let's just make this have uh, a black outline. And now if we look up here, we can see how thick that outline is. And we can see that it might be made up out of two lines or three lines or dots whatever okay so you go and play about with those things let's go and put that back down to something like that um, we can put text in these boxes so we can go and use the type tool here these boxes are just waiting for some content this one now has color in it these two still don't have anything in so if we click on the type tool we can go over this box and we can press in it and then you can see 
that you can type in this box. You can also add a load of placeholder text, which is just gobbledygook type that just looks like text for you. I'm not going to explain where this came from at the moment, but it's quite a useful thing to have. Okay, and you can double tap, triple, five times, select all of this stuff, uh, all the text in there, and then you can go and play about with choosing different fonts, looking at the different weight of them, the, la the line spacing, letter spacing, etc. But I'll talk about that in another session. All of that's in there. The other thing that we'll be wanting to do uh, with InDesign is to add images and this will be the first couple of homework tasks as well so we've got a box here oh i've accidentally made another one um, and we want to place an image inside it so if we go onto the internet uh, i've got some pictures here of um, some saw bass posters let's choose that one so we'll go and view the file here it is now, it's useful to save the actual document itself, the file. So we're going to just um, control click on that and save that image. I've got a little folder here called InDesign Pictures, which is where all my stuff's going to live. So we've got Sawbrass, The Shining Film Poster. So that's going to live in there. Okay, so it's best to keep these things as individual files rather than paste, uh, copy and paste things in off the internet like you might be used to doing with Word. Um, this works a lot better with the real files and ref it needs to reference them and it will make a preview when you just place the document in whatever this poster um, but if you move that original image the shining poster for instance if we delete it then all it's going to have inside this document when you perhaps go to export it is the preview version and it'll be a lower quality version than the actual one um, that you've stolen from the internet or whatever. So we want to file and place um, or command and D and then choose the image that we want to put in to this particular box. And you can see here, because it was selected, it just plonks it in there for us. And we can go and change the size of things like this so that we can think, oh, we're going to get this in here. We can move the content of the box around by getting hold of this thing in the middle so that we can perhaps see it better or we can press control and click and we can go and look at fitting but or we can look at fitting up here and we can try and fit the um, poster into this box so that it works better for us so that we can see whatever it is that we want to see in here okay so I'm just getting hold of the uh, box itself and resizing it like that um, and I'm moving it around just by holding the actual poster but if I go over here you can see my cursor turns into a hand and now I can move this around a little bit more and I can perhaps get in a little bit of the information in there as well okay so that oh yeah and you can see here this is the bounds of the poster itself whereas this is the bounds of the box that it's inside. I hope that makes sense. Right. Not a very good thing to do, so let's undo those things there. So click away from it and then go and click back on it and we can move it around. You can see it's got this little chain link on it, which means that it's linking to another file somewhere. So that's important to, to remember that so that you're not deleting stuff having a clean up or whatever and then losing the, the stuff that you're actually embedding in your um, InDesign documents. So like in Photoshop, you've got layers. You can see here we have one layer and inside layer one, you have three things. We've got that green rectangle, we've got some text and we've got the shining poster there. And you can move these things in order in the same way that you can in Photoshop so that you can have one thing on top of another or underneath so that you can work out oh, where does that need to be that needs to be there so that you can 
see things and have things on top of other stuff. Okay, so there's the content inside a um, InDesign document. So let's just save it. So we can go to File, or we can go to Save, and we're going to save that in this InDesign folder. So this can be Test to Saving Preview Images with the document. Okay, save that in there. And so that's your working document. And then if we want to export it so that we could um, put it on an, on the internet in a web page, um, we can go to File and Export, or we can press Command and E. And then in here, it's got its name, Test2. We want to change that from PDF to uh, JPEG. And now this will just compress it down, make it into an A4 sized um, JPEG image. So how many pages is it? Well, it's only one image. So the range there is just one. Um, how much, how, how high do we want the quality? Let's have it pretty high there. Resolution will be 72 pixels per inch because all main, main, mainly pictures that you find on the internet are 72 pixels per inch and they are for screen. So they are red, green, blue. Um, so we can press export. And then that'll just save that as a JPEG in that folder. If we wanted to save it for handing in, higher quality, uh, etc., then we could go to export again and then just change this to Adobe PDF. So if we have a quick look in here, we get more options in here. There's different versions for print and things like that, down to smallest file size. So you might want a small file size just to send as a quick email attachment to someone who you're perhaps working for and they say, oh, can you send me a proof? And you can just email them something like this and they can look at it on their phone or whatever and they can see, oh yeah, that looks fine. Um, you didn't need to send them the big full high quality version because they might have only wanted just to check where the picture were um, positioned on the, on the page or whatever. Okay, so we'll go for high quality print at the moment. And in here, again, we've got the pages and a load of other stuff that we can just take for granted. Compression is quite useful just to be aware of. If you have put in photographs that you've taken on a digital camera, um, they might be a higher resolution than, let's say, 72 pixels per inch, or in this case, 450. So what this will do is it will drop the quality down, uh, the pixels per inch down, just so that it makes it a bit more dealable with inside the document. So that's the same for color and grayscale and black and white pictures. Max and bleed, we can switch on these um, printer marks. So that would bring in to consideration this area and other things for the printer, if you were to send it to a printer to get printed. So that's quite a useful thing to bear in mind in there. And then all the rest of these things, yes, these will all be fine. Back to the summary there of all of the bits that you've set up in it. Let's just press export. So there's overset text on these pages. So what this is warning us about probably is that this box here is a bit too far out of the main um, margin area and it's getting close to the edge of the page. So what might happen is that if this was going to a normal printer it wouldn't perhaps be able to print the yellow and black uh, elements on this page properly um, so it's just given us a little warning about that we're keeping this as a digital file so it's not a problem so let's just press ok so that'll have saved that as a pdf for us so let's go and hide that let's go and hide this and let's go and have a look in this folder. So you can see here that here's the poster that I stole off the internet. Uh, here's the InDesign document. Here's the JPEG version of it, which will be a bit compressed. And here's the PDF version of it. We can see it's added these printer marks into it. So we've got these crop marks, we've got color bars and things like that. You've got the name of the file and alignment um, targets and stuff as well.